because you spent 23 years as an official in the NFL and you were the first black referee as I understand it. Tell us about how that transition happened. Well, when I first came into the league, each year at our clinic in uh, Dallas, they always ask if you had an opportunity to change positions, what position you'd like to change to. And I always filled out the card, uh, referee. Number one, to me, it's the easiest position on the field. You just babysit a quarterback. Uh, and then in 1980, I believe it was 1988, uh, Art McNally, who was the supervisor at that time, called me and asked me if I was ready to make the move. And I jumped at it, yes, indeed. <laughs> so we went from there. Who were some of your early mentors? And share with us any conversation or guidance they provided you along the way. Well, when I came back to D.C. after uh, leaving the Air Force, uh, a guy named Tom Beard took me under his wing and kind of guided me, made sure I stayed on the straight and narrow as far as college officiating was concerned. Uh, when I came in, was accepted into the league in 1981, I was put on Jim Tunney's crew for the first four years, and I think that's one of the best things that could have happened to me because at that time, he was the premier referee in the league. He was a uh, ex-superintendent of schools in Los Angeles. He's a motivational speaker. So I kind of picked up a lot of things from him and my temperament and his temperament kind of meshed. And then af after the four years with Jim, I was with uh, Dick Jorgensen. Again, his temperament was similar to, to Jim's. He's, he was a bank president, so, you know, straight and narrow there, too. We hope. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no shenanigans there. And uh, those two just kind of set the way that I like to run a crew. They weren't overbearing. Everybody knew they were in charge without without showing it. Without being overbearing? Yes, yes. I guess that's a nice way of putting it, yes. How diverse is officiating today? Well, when I first came to the league, I think we had uh, nine black officials. And I took a look at the roster this morning. I, we've got 33 wow. black officials now. Oh, that's great yes, news. Yes, yes. You are recognized as a very important historical figure. How do you wish to be remembered in history? I'd like to be remembered by my cohorts as someone they'd want to walk on the field with on Sunday afternoon. Now, history, I can't deal with that. Uh, somebody had to be first. <laughs> <laughs> and it was wonderful that it was you because well, you are a terrific role model. Well, thank you. What are the risks of injury to officials? The biggest one is getting run over, getting too close to a play, not recognizing when it's time to back away. Uh, we get a lot of guys to get their knees wiped out. The other things are just minor uh, tears, stretches, and those type of nagging injuries. But the biggest thing is the, the knees and the legs, getting too close to the play, uh, getting rolled up on, on the sideline, uh, trying to back out, and you back out into your chain crew, and they're, not, <laughs> they're in your way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, you got hurt officiating, is that correct, or was it off the field? No, it was a crazy situation. We were up in, uh, New, uh, what was it, New England? Buffalo. I'm just trying a long pass downfield. I'm just jogging downfield, and I felt something oh and didn't know what it was. Went down. Now we're coming back the other way. I, again, I'm just trotting up the field, and I snapped my del what is it, deltoid ligament in my ankle. So, And they had to do reconstruction surgery. Oh, my. That. Did you have to get carried off the field? Uh, well, didn't care. I, walk, I was able to walk off Good. the field. I, I, I sat on the sideline for a while, and uh, my back judge at that time was uh, – Scott Green, and he came over and said, hey, man, I need your white hat. <laughs> <laughs> Different question. What position do you occupy now, and are you in a position that you still continue to effectuate positive change within the NFL? We have four regional supervisors in, in the NFL office, and I'm the Northeast Regional, regional Supervisor. I'm responsible for the, uh, the Redskins, the Ravens, Philadelphia, the Jets, Giants, and Buffalo. Not our beloved Patriots? Not, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I mentioned, yes, New England. I forgot New England. New England. Yes, okay. yes, New England. Don't yes, forget yes. us. Explain the milestones that have occurred within the NFL with respect to race relations. Milestones? The, well, the one that I remember right offhand was 1965 when Burl Toler became the first black official in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had, and I was lucky to be a part of this, 1988, Washington, Denver. Yes. Uh, Doug Williams, the first black 
in the Super Bowl. I was hoping you would tell yeah, that yeah. story. What is it like to officiate in the Super Bowl? Once you realize you've gotten the assignment, it, it kind of takes on the shape of any other game. I, it, at least it did for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to stay focused. That's the same one thing. How does one stay focused when you have players in your face, you might have management or coaches in your face questioning calls, and your goal has to be to stay cool and focused. How do you do that? Well, that's why you don't just come straight from high school into the NFL. <laughs> it takes a while to get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just training. It's like any other job. You, you get used to it. You're starting out with Pop Warner, where the only people there bothering you are the parents. Yeah. <laughs> and you go from there to high school. Now you get the players and the coaches involved. And then college, it becomes more coaches than anything else. Uh, you get used to it. It's just like being a policeman. Number one, you know you're not going to please everybody on every call. I, can I say this? You're going to piss somebody. 50% <laughs> of the time, you're going to piss somebody off, all right? Oh, you're not doing your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's just the way it is. That, yeah. that goes with the territory. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.